Hello, fashion sellers. I don't know where to start with this. It's difficult. And I guess you can tell by the title that I'm not doing an outfit of the week video. And like I said, I don't know where to start. It's there's so much there's so much happening in the world today. And we are all human beings that come in variations of skin tone, from white skin tone to black skin tones. And I've seen a lot on social media and on TV. Um, I really shouldn't say a lot because I don't really watch a lot of TV or watch a lot on social media. It's, for me, it's, it's too much TV in general I'm talking about. And um, in the past couple of days, I've been watching a little bit more of the news and also watch, looking at my social media a lot more than I usually do. And um, it's having a YouTube channel um, is one of the reasons why I'm saying what I'm going to say. Um, you feel it so, it's your duty and maybe, you know, it's, it's something we shouldn't have to do as human beings, you know, it's, really, planet Earth, this beautiful blue planet that we all inhabit and we all come onto this planet the same way, we have a movement for people who have dark skin. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about why I am doing this video. I'm doing this video for people of colour, as we phrase it as, um, I'm doing for people who are young beings, whether you are, have a dark skin tone or white, light skin tone. We're humans. We just come in a variety of different beautiful colours. But another reason why I wanted to do this video is also for my family. Um, I think as an aunt, I have a duty to say something. And I will say that is because I am on YouTube, the reason why I'm doing the video. And maybe, you know, when my time has come, that my nephew, my great nephew, my niece, and I'm expecting to be an aunt again um, to another great niece, that they will see that their aunt made an effort to share their, her experience of racism. And yes, I have experienced racism as a little, as a little girl. I have experienced racism as a teenager, I have experienced racism as a young adult, and yes, I have experienced racism in my middle age. I'm hoping that if I get to the age of my parents, my father is in his mid 80s, my mother is in her late 80s, that I won't experience racism. And within the work environment, yeah, in, in the professions that I love, fashion and especially teaching, yeah, I have. It's hard. It's difficult. I hear the voices of people who have skin colour like mine 
I see their tears in recent news on TV, on our, on our phones. I see their tears, I hear their voices. They sound lost. They've been given advice that if your voice starts to crackle, continue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. But as a teacher, as an educator, I can tell you that I have been in classrooms where I had to teach and I have young people saying not very nice comments and predominantly most schools that I've taught in have been 80-90% white students and I've been into a lot of schools where I have been the only black teacher and um, the reason why I say a lot of schools is that I've done a lot of supply teaching and um, I think one of the reasons behind that is there's lots of issues in the UK around education and when I was teaching in schools I didn't want to stay anywhere for too long um, you know for many reasons and um, I've also taught in further education which is colleges and um, which I thoroughly and thoroughly enjoyed even schools I enjoyed it um, yeah and also I've taught at university level as well and racism looks different and all those three levels but my passion is teaching I, I don't want to talk about my experiences because I don't want to overshadow what's happening and you know it, it, it I don't really want to say it is what it is, but it is what it is, if that makes sense. Um, and I've been thinking a lot of about the experiences that I've had. There's too many to mention, um, but I did think that, that I need to put a little bit out there and just talk about one of the two things that have popped up in my head more or less straight away without kind of thinking right well, maybe I should think about this or maybe I should think about or maybe they'll you know what so I decided that I'm going to share these with you that um, and, and, and the reason why I'm choosing education because our young people are important whatever your skin colour is they are feeling the pain I have been teaching online for many years now and before I came online, and like I said, I've been teaching in schools. And my agency that I was working for sent me to a primary school. And, I, and, and it's the first time, first and last time I've actually taught in a primary school. It's an area I didn't want to go into because I wanted to focus on fashion and, you know, textiles. And I do remember going into this classroom of so many faces. Um, I... There were no black children in the classroom, if I recall correctly, and there's probably one or two Asians children. And um, I, um, I, I, they, were, they, were, they were lovely. I, I think they were a little bit fascinated by the fact that there was this black teacher, a little bit. I, 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 I got that sense. Um, I do believe I was the only black teacher that was there, and I was only there for the day. Um, and uh, there's about 34, 34, so many young children, oh. And I got them to do the work that was required of them, um, but I couldn't get a table of, I believe, four boys to do the work to begin with. And they made it very apparent that they don't like me, um, I should say I didn't like my skin colour. Um, they made that very apparent. They were about the age of 9, 10, 11. And as the lesson progressed, um, a lot of students, a lot of the pupils um, were, were going on with their work and I would go around the table to make sure they were doing the work that was required of them, that was set by their teacher. And I would go to this table where I was not welcomed, and they made sure that they knew that I wasn't welcomed. Um, but I 
continued with my job throughout the day and gradually I got uh, a couple of the boys engaged in their work, to do their work. And um, I think this memory will always stick with me. It's because I wasn't expecting it. It's, it's, it's an on. You just get on. I don't want this video to be too long. Um, so um, by the end of the lesson, I managed to get, yeah, the whole class, um, bar one uh, student to do the work. And at the end of the class, um, a couple of the boys came over to me and said they they didn't apologise for what they were saying. They basically, and I suppose this is their way of apologising because we're talking about children here. Um, it's like they came up to me and said, Miss, um, I just want to say that you are a good teacher. I know you're coming back tomorrow. <laughs> uh, um, I was like, right, I'm, I'm not sure how to take this because the remarks that you were, that there was, I didn't say this to you, but this is what I was thinking. Um, because I was literally like, you know, my breath was taken away. And um, when they came to my, my table and were saying this to me, um, there was one young boy that was at the table that I knew would never come and I knew that, you know, I never got anything out of him. So that was that. And it was like, um, well, I won't be coming back tomorrow because your teacher is coming back tomorrow. Um, well, to me, I saw that as a nice compliment that even though I wasn't talking about race in the classroom, I had nothing to, you know, in that context, it was just like, I suppose, their realisation that eventually my skin colour was not of importance. The fact that I got them to do work and pass, and I know this for a lot of my career when I've been teaching, that I seem to have a gift that I can get students to put their name or the subject onto paper. And a lot of t teachers who have been employed permanently within the schools have difficulty doing that. And um, yeah, that was an experience that will stick with me for a long time. And if I had an opportunity to go back um, to that school, um, my answer would have been no, primarily because it's a primary school. And also, I'm, I'm tired of hearing that. You know, I know that if I went to another school, it's, it happens. You just, as a black teacher, and if you are a black teacher out there, stick with it. You have a gift that needs to be shared. That's all I can say. I personally think it will get better. Stick with it. And for teachers, generally speaking, all teachers, because it is a difficult profession to be in today, uh, stick with it. They need you. They do. The other experience is I went to another school and there was a much more high percentage of black students within that school. Um, I don't believe I was the only white te black teacher <laughs> that was there. Um, I think it was a long time ago, yeah. Um, but like I said, it was just fly teaching. I was there for a bit longer. I, I think I was supposed to go there for two days and I ended up staying there for, must be about a couple of months. And as a fly teacher, you teach, you, you don't, you're not, not necessarily teach to that degree in a sense you, you, you actually engage in students in a work that's being set by their teachers and I do remember a young lad coming up to me and this was a young black lad and he was due to leave school in the next couple of weeks and so not much is done as far as teaching is concerned especially when students are going to be leaving within a couple of weeks and um, he actually said I can't believe that this school has finally decided to um, employ, I think he thought I was employed, um, a black teacher now that I'm leaving. Um, yeah. There have been lots of other incidents. 
another an, an, another one and then I'll quickly give you back your time um was I went to another school <laughs> and um and, and, and I'm a person who doesn't like to be late and, and if you're a law supply teacher it's imperative that you are not late um because there's going to be no you know more often than not the, the, they need teachers to be there at the moment school starts, that there is a teacher there. And I went on to school and I'm usually 15 to 20 minutes before I actually due to be told where I'm supposed to go, do, um, where I'm supposed to go and etc, etc. And I was sitting in the foyer for, for a long period of time. My phone rang and my agency said to me, where are you? Where are you? You know, you're supposed, you know, you're supposed to be um, at this in at schools before they actually start because you know there is no one to to to, to make sure these students um have someone to um to take the lesson. And it's like, I'm oh, I started to panic. It's like I'm at the wrong school. Did I? Uh, it's like oh, what? What school am I supposed to be at? And it says you're supposed to be at such, such a school. And I'm like, yeah, that's where I am. And it was like, why aren't you in, in in the classroom with these students? They don't have an adult to thinking, whoa, whoa. Right. I have been sitting here for about 15, 20 minutes. I report to reception, as you do, obviously. I'm in a school I've never been into. And I've told them that I've been sent by my agency and I'm Mrs. Lee. And um, they said, okay, then go on, you know, you sit in the, either the um, staff room. It's usually the staff room, actually, come to think about it. But I was in the foyer and I was just sitting there. I did hear the school bell ring and I was still sitting there. And when my agent was saying to me, well, why is no one directed to where to go? I don't know. You know, and I really do appreciate the fact that you're telling me that I'm supposed to be in a classroom, but... I'm in a school, I don't know who I'm supposed to be speaking to. No head has come to me. No head of department has come to me. I'm just sitting here. And later it came, it revealed to me that they thought that I was just a visitor to the school. And I heard here saying, oh, it's a black teacher. I, pardon? They came out and says, oh, we are sorry, um, and just quickly took me to the classroom. This is a class, and get on with it. I don't know. This world will get better. And I am directing this video to the young people in this world. Whatever colour you are, be kind to each other. We are here to stay on this beautiful planet Earth. The racists that are out there, what can I say? Stop. The planet Earth is for all of us to enjoy and look after. If you have an issue how can you? Really? We're human beings. We're all supposed to get on. Look after the planet. If you have issues in with anything, shine the light on your life and sort your life. Leave our children alone. If you don't like the fact that there are dark-skinned people on planet Earth, what advice can I give you? Um, um, maybe, I don't know if I should say this, maybe, you know, stop the planet, get off and go on to another planet and, you know, voice your racism there. A little girl inside of me I have no words to say to people like you. 
I've heard voices of little girls, black and white, boys, black. And I will admit I haven't seen any videos of um, white boys. They're in pain. And you're the cause as a racist. Stop. I have a talent. I am an amazing teacher of fashion and the world needs my gift. Find yours and share it because the world needs yours too. Our white students need black teachers as much as our black students. That's one thing that I've learned in my job as a teacher, going to all these schools, that white students need us. I did not realise that until I actually went into schools. Thank you for, my, I'm talking about my community now, for watching my video, allowing me to say what I need to say. I hope that things will change quickly. I really do hope that it will change quickly. Do I think it can? Absolutely, I do. Next week, I will be doing my Outfits of the Week. I love my community, and I know you come in all beautiful and amazing colours. Um, that's it. I'm coming to you.